Hello and welcome as we gather together for the 19th Sunday after Trinity. Um, our focus for today is going to be on uh, really friends and who is the best friend of all. Well, any Sunday school kid can tell you it's Jesus. But we're going to talk about why and what it means to be a true friend. We're following the order of divine service setting one, which if you have a handy dandy hymnal at home, which I hope you do, uh, it's page 151, and I always put everything on screen. So, with that being said, let's begin. Our hymn of invocation for today is number 686, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 686. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if this is your earnest and penitent confession, then hear the good news that you are offered. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for today is uh, drawn upon various portions of Psalm 78 and Psalm 35 and Psalm 48. Oh, and Psalm 34. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. This is God, our God forever and ever. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Things that we have heard and known, that our fathers have told us. We will tell the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. This is God, our God forever and ever. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of your bountiful goodness, keep from us all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish whatever you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our prophecy for today, our Old Testament, is from the prophet Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Remember these things, Jacob, and Israel, for you are my servant. I formed you. You are my servant. Israel, you will never be forgotten by me. I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Rejoice, heavens, for the Lord has acted. Shout, depths of the earth. Break out into singing mountains, forest, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorifies himself through Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today is the first two verses of Psalm 141. O Lord, I call upon you, hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Our epistle for today is from Paul's letter to the churches of Ephesus, chapter 4. Take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of the truth. Therefore, putting away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and don't give the devil an opportunity. Let the thief no longer steal. Instead, he is to do honest work with his own hands, so that he has something to share with anyone in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our verse of the day today is Psalm 98, verse 1a. Alleluia! Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord! Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Just then some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Have courage, son. Your sins are forgiven. At this some of the scribes said to themselves, He's blaspheming. Perceiving their thoughts, Jesus said, Why are you thinking evil things in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then told the paralytic, Get up, take your stretcher, and go home. So he got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were awestruck and gave glory to God who had given such authority to men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Our hymn of the day today is number 814, O Bless the Lord My Soul. Number 814. Bless the Lord, my soul, let all within me join, and aid my tongue to bless his name, whose favors are divine. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul, nor let his mercies lie. Forgotten in unthankfulness and without praises die. Tis he forgives thy sins, tis he relieves thy pain, tis he that heals thy sicknesses and makes thee young. He crowns thy life with love When ransomed from the grave He that redeemed my soul from hell Hath sovereign power to save He fills the poor with good the sufferers rest. The Lord hath judgments for the proud and justice for the oppressed. His wondrous works and ways he made by Moses known, but sent the world his truth and grace by his beloved Son. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Many years ago, there was a man who wanted to meet Jesus. Everyone in that day wanted to meet Jesus. He had huge crowds surrounding him everywhere he went. But this particular man hoped Jesus would heal him. But there was a problem. He couldn't walk. Even more, there were too many people blocking the way to Jesus. So how would he get there? The local government was unwilling to help. They didn't care about the little guy. The military wasn't interested. They were too busy keeping the Roman peace. The bankers knew there was no money in it. The religious leaders saw him as a sinner and were unwilling to lift a finger. The man needed someone to get him to Jesus. He needed a friend. It has been said, a friend is one who steps in when the whole world steps out. Or, as I heard it growing up, uh, an old friend will help you move, a good friend will help you move a dead body. You see, this man was as good as dead. He needed four good friends to move him. And that's exactly what happens. If you listen to verse 2 following here, Just then some men brought him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Have courage, son. Your sins are forgiven. Notice that first verse there. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Have courage, son. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus forgave the man because of his friend's faith. Jesus saw the love they had for the man. He saw the love it took to hoist him up and lower him through the roof, uh, a detail we don't get in this gospel account, but we do from the parallel gospels. It required a ladder, a robe, ingenuity, rope, and a whole lot of love. Jesus saw their faith and forgave the man on the spot. Now that's friendship. Now in life, we have many vocations. We have the vocation of work. 
We have the vocation of family. We have the vocation of being a neighbor. But one of our greatest vocations is friendship. Moses had Aaron to lift his arms. Naomi had Ruth. Paul had Timothy. Lewis had Clark. Rachel had Monica, Chandler, Joey, Phoebe, and Ross. So who are your friends? Who can you rely on? Who relies on you? And who will hold up your arms when you cannot? And whose arms will you hold up? Who are you bringing to Jesus? The paralytic needed friends to get him to Jesus, and he had them. And the story should end there, and all should be fine, but of course it's not. Listen to verse 3. At this, some of the scribes said to him, themselves, He's blaspheming. Do you remember where the religious leaders are at? That's right, they're in this house with Jesus. They were the reason why the paralytic couldn't get to Jesus in the first place, because they blocked the way. No wonder Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs. In other words, clean on the outside and dead on the inside. They did not have the mind of Christ. They trusted their own rightness instead of God's righteousness. They were the kind of people Paul talked about in Philippians 2 when he said, all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Their faith was in themselves. Brothers and sisters, don't ever place your trust in yourself. You will always let yourself down. There's only one person you can trust, one person who is your truest friend, namely Jesus. As verse 4 onwards explains, Perceiving their thoughts, Jesus said, Why are you thinking evil things in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then told this paralytic, Get up, take your stretcher, and go home. So he got up and went home. And when the crowd saw this, they were awestruck and gave glory to God, who had given such authority to men. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is your friend. Jesus forgives you because you were a sinner. He heals you because he loves you. He dies for you so that you can be raised up again. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. If you don't know that Jesus is your friend, I plead with you to get back to your Bible, to get to know him better. As the old hymn says, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. There really is no better friend than Jesus. I want to end with this question. What do you think... <coughs> What do you think these friends did after the man was healed? No longer did his friends need to carry him everywhere. So what do you think they did? I imagine that they ran and danced all the way home. And what did they do with that, that pallet, that stretcher? I suspect they used it for a bonfire and partied the night away. Why do I think that? Well, because that's what friends do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for being my friend and letting me be your friend. Thank you for letting me bring you Christ every week, over and over again. And thank you for bringing others to hear the word of Jesus. May you continue to love each other as you run, dance, and celebrate together in this life you have in Christ. And never forget, Jesus is the truest friend, the one who gave up his life for you. Amen. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools, so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the distressed, and those who sorrow. We ask your special blessings upon Lundy Priestap, David Ritz, Lawrence and Ruth Schmidt, Judy Scheel, Elizabeth Winkler, Vera Ahrens, Eric and Paula Hins, Norma Rose, Renata Rose, Ron Rose, Lois Carter, Allison Donaldson, Susanna Elzinga, and Susanna Kingsbury. Except we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our hymn to depart today is number 895. Now thank we all our God, number 895. Thank you so much for coming and worshiping together as we celebrate the fact that Jesus is that truest friend that even when we were his enemies, he came and rescued us. And so we are called to a life of repentance and thanksgiving for that wonderful blood cleansing that Christ gave us. He truly is our best friend. Amen. Amen. 